in a house, these little bits of quarter round will have gotten kicked loose from around the baseboard and they'll, they'll be missing entirely. This piece happens to be uh, conveniently available because the kitchen's being renovated, which is easier than going out and buying new quarter round. They call it quarter round because, of course, it's quarter of a circle. So if you need to go buy new quarter round, you just go buy new quarter round. But this is actually really convenient because it's got seven or eight layers of paint on it, so it'll match all the rest of the quarter round in the house. Now, to use quarter round efficiently, you have to use either a chop saw, a big electric tool, or this classy little miter box. A miter box is used with a back saw. The reason they call it a back saw is because it's got this nice strong spine on it, which keeps the um, saw blade from wobbling as you're cutting, so it provides a lot of support, especially for using it in a miter box. Now, first thing we have to do when we're replacing a piece of baseboard is take a, an accurate measurement, because you see, the space that we're trying to fill has two short ends and two long ends. So it, it can be amazingly tricky to get this right when you're doing it for the first time. One of these ends that we stole from the kitchen already has the right angle on it, you can see like so. But this other end needs to be cut. Now it's really easy to cut the piece too short and then you end up either with wads of caulking in the thing to fill up the space or you just have to start all over again. So in order to avoid making that mistake I'll show you two simple tricks to cutting a piece of um, what are these are called outside corners. So this is a piece of cord around with outside corners. To get the inside measurement put the piece of baseboard a little bit higher on the wall and now I can see this corner lines up perfectly with that inside edge and then this I'm just going to mark a little line to show where this corner is see then just to make doubly sure that I get it right I turn it around and I match up this outer corner and I'm going to put a little mark on this corner so now I have, on my, my little stick here, I have an inside mark and I have this mark that shows me where the outside is. Now I know when I put it in my miter box that I'm not going to cut it the wrong way because the first time I tried this, of course, I cut two angles that looked just like that, just identical. So I put it in place all proudly and then one of them went like this. So I, I had to start over. Not today though, boy. Okay, so I put it in the miter box. And there's the angle that I need. You can see on the miter box, the 45 degree angles are here. And then there's a 90 right through the middle if you happen to need to cut a 90. Okay, so I'm going to put the quarter around here. And I'm going to line it up. This one, which is the inside mark, is there. My outside mark is falling a little bit outside, which tells me either this angle the far angle is either a little funky, perhaps the carpenter who did it didn't quite cut a 45 degree angle, or something else. <laughs> so let's just see. You can really only experiment, but you know what? I'm going to cut it a little bit long, because I'd rather have too much wood left at the end of my cut than not enough. So I'm just going to slide the top mark over a little bit, and then I will saw. I'm going to stabilize the wood with my thumb and keep my fingers out of the way of the saw, obviously. Oops, I moved it. Oh, it's moving all over the place on my drop cloth. Now, the way a, a back saw works is, I just want to show you this really quickly. Don't think I'm stalling or anything. Um, the, the little uh, teeth on the saw are angled so that the cutting takes place on the stroke forward. And then it's a resting stroke on the way back. Okay, So most of your energy should go into the front part of the... That's got it check it once in a while because sometimes you can saw way deep into your miter box and not realize you've already cut through the wood. All right, so set that aside. 
I'm going to try, ah, unbelievably, it fits perfectly. Now, see, it's, a, it's still a bit long, actually, but I'm going to call it fair. I'll be caulking around here, so it's okay that we have a little bit of a gap. So the next thing I want to do is drill um, through the, this little piece of baseboard. This is a really, really short board. And I'm afraid that I'll split it if I just go ahead and nail into it, which is why I'm going to pre-drill. So I'll do it in place. And these are finished nails. Finished nails are, um, well, there's a bunch of different kinds. This kind is spiral shanked, which means it twists as it moves into the wood and it holds really well. They also, finished nails all have tiny little heads on them because you don't really want to see them. Um, if they had a great big flat head on top, it would show quite prominently on the, on the quarter round. Oh, well, see, that's, <laughs> I'm so strong, I could just push it right in. You see that? Okay, so that's not going to hold anything, because I was lucky enough to have drilled that hole on an angle that goes right into the joint, which is, of course, not going to hold anything. So I have to just try a new hole. I'll be patching that with caulking, so don't worry. <laughs> broke my drill. Well, this is just going better and better. See, this is one of those little easy repairs where everything just goes right. And there's my drill. So now I have to use my needle nose pliers to get my drill. Oh, even better. I've got these other pliers, which I'll really grab easily. You see, those little fine drill bits, they're a thing of great beauty, but they often break, especially if you're drilling into old wood, which is often really hard. The older wood gets, the harder it gets. There we go. All right, so I have my drill index here. And I have two choices. I can either go with this microscopic little drill bit, which I think is 1 32nd of an inch, or this really larger bit, which will just let the nail slip in and out. So. I think what I'm going to do is try this little, little type. Either that or I would have to be going to the hardware store right now to get a new drill bit. So this poor little piece of baseboard is now peppered with two, uh, actually three holes, one of which we hope will be useful, but let's just test it. Yeah, you see that one I'm going to have some luck with. Oh, this little drill bit is so tender. Okay, so that fits. We know that these two, this one, if anything, it's going to just, um, it'll be a bit of a fight to get the nail in, but at least it's not going to split the baseboard. Um, and also, the, the, what I want to do before I go ahead and nail it is to glue the piece in place. So I'm just going to run a little thin line of carpenter's glue which is just like white glue, only yellow, and it's stronger. And just I just get right in there with my fingers. I just don't seem to care. I just And then I'll just wipe it on my pants, because that's the kind of carpenter I am. OK, so there we have two sides. In it goes. OK, so the glue squirts out a little bit. I'll, I'm going to nail them in place first. I'm going to nail this piece in place first, then I'll wipe up the excess glue. And there's my first nail. Now, I don't 
set it all the way into the wood because I know myself too well and I will make a hammer track which is this little round end of the hammer makes a nice big dent in the wood so I've stopped about an eighth of an inch out and I'm going to put the other nail in place the same way which hole was it? I think it was this one And then I use what is called a nail set. Nail sets come in several sizes, and all you need to do is pick the size that will go, that will sit on top of the finished nail head. Um, the finished nails themselves have a fairly flat head, but when the, when the metal of the, which is, this is very hard tempered steel, when this meets the end of the finish nail, it digs a nice little um, groove in it and really holds on tight. So, so this is the way they do it. You hit first once to see if you're balanced and then you hit a little bit harder, which drives the nail in. So it's always tap, 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 like that. So I've now buried the head of the finish nail just a little bit under the surface of the wood. I'm going to caulk it, and it's going to, you're not even going to know it's there. Just before I caulk um, the joint here, I want to show you a trick. The, this joint at this end, which is farthest away from you, is really tight and perfect. And then this, this one, actually, this piece ran a little bit long. So I, I'm just going to take... Um, a piece of sandpaper, and I'll just wrap it around this waste bit of wood. And I just, whoops, run it like this over the end of the joint, and it sands it off so that it actually looks perfect. Now, that looks brown to you, but to, to the, um, the three-dimensional surface is now smooth. So when it's painted up, you'll never know that it was that little boo-boo. And finally, we lay in. And I'll also, at the same time, caulk the holes. And take my wet rag, which I always have available, and just wipe over the top. If you find when you go to replace trim that's missing in your house that your trim is unique or maybe more ornate than quarter round or um, maybe just a different size than is available at your local hardware store, then a tip that you can possibly use is to go look inside the closets in your house because often they use the same trim in the closets that they used in the main rooms. So you can sneak a piece out of the closet and not worry about it not being able to find it at the hardware store. I used to laugh at those ring around the collar ads. The poor man. The shame, the humiliation of ring around the collar. The dirty, trashy rings. And then I found something out. It's not dirt. It's sebum oils. Sebum oils can ruin your wash day. But don't fret. Just take a piece of white chalk rub the chalk into the sebum oil or ring around a collar and the chalk actually soaks up the sebum oils so you just let that shirt sit there for about 10 minutes and then you launder as usual end the heartbreak get the chalk for a repair to remember i'm mag ruckman